Okay, let's go ahead and find the sine of 60 degrees without a calculator. Now, of course, you can get your calculator out and you go ahead and put in 60. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode and you hit that sign button and you would get the answer. But there's a lot of angles when you're studying trigonometry um, that you're going to have to be able to evaluate uh, for sine, cosine, and tangent uh, without the aid of a calculator. Uh, believe me, uh, this is going to be a pretty common uh, uh, question being asked. As a matter of fact, a lot of trigonometry, you'll be surprised. I would say like 50-50. 50% uh, of what you're going to be doing is going to uh, be without a calculator, okay? And you're going to be dealing uh, pretty frequently with these type of angles. So 60 degrees is one of those angles. But let me uh, list a few more. So we have like 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, even 0 degrees. There's others. And you're going to see these um, um, also in radian measures. So you'll see this like pi over 4. Uh, pi over 2. So you're going to have to get really familiar with how to evaluate these basic trigonometric functions without a calculator. And this would be a nice little basic example of how you do that. Okay, But um, again, you're going to want to practice this. So I'll leave you uh, some, uh, some tips and some suggestions as we get going in the video. But uh, first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Taba Class Math. I'm also a uh, middle and high school math teacher, and over several years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Um, of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses ranging from uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly. Uh, which has all my advanced trigonometry in it, so I'm pretty excited about that. But I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the SAT, ACT, GET, um, high set, uh, maybe the CLEP exam, Accuplacer, Alex, uh, teacher certification exam, all those exams have a lot of math on them. So if you don't do well in the math section, you don't do well on the exam. And of course, we don't want that to happen. So if you need help, just go to the, uh, my website, and check out my full course catalog. If I don't have the exam that you're studying, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also work a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you're homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning program. And then obviously I help uh, those of you that are struggling in your current math course. So, uh, but one thing I uh, can't do for you that you gotta do for yourself if you're truly serious about improving and learning math, that is taking great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who have great notes, you know, like, wow, your notes are amazing. Guess what? They always get like great grades. No surprise there. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to look at their cell phone, uh, talk to their friends, and maybe do their homework for the class during math class. Uh, and you'll be like, really? People do that? Yes. In fact, a lot of students do this. As a matter of fact, I did a lot of this stuff way back in the 1980s. Now, except for the cell phone part, we didn't have that. But I was quite distracted, and of course, my grades uh, look like this, C minus, and you know, I'm like, yeah, listen, I get it. You know, as a teacher, you see things, but if you really, really want to do well, you can't say, oh, my teacher, you know, I don't like my teacher, or et cetera, et cetera. You got to take responsibility uh, for your uh, learning, okay? And the biggest thing you can do to help yourself is to uh, remain focused and engaged on. Um, uh, in class, okay? And the best way to do that is to take great math notes. You've got to really work hard at that. But as you're improving, I offer uh, detailed comprehensive math notes so you got something to study from to include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so if you want to kind of play along here for a second and get your calculator out and uh, figure out what the sine of 60 degrees is, uh, you can, you know, that's that's good. That's fine because you're going to be using your calculator and you'll get some sort of decimal value. Now, let's take a look at the sine graph. Now, I don't know if you're familiar with this or not, but the, the graph of sine, okay, looks something like this. Matter of fact, it goes like this over and over and over again. It's called, ooh, that's kind of terrible, but basically it's a wave, okay, a sine wave. And um, it's what we call a periodic uh, function, all right? It just kind of keeps repeating itself uh, consistently, and it bounces from 1 to negative 1. This is the standard 
uh, graph of sine x, right? So y equals sine x, but you kind of get the idea. And this is what we call one period, one uh, kind of, uh, yes, well, one period, one cycle, okay, of the graph. Now, kind of uh, not doing it here correctly, but you can kind of see it here um, exactly. Now, it starts at zero degrees, okay, and at zero, what you're, what you're looking at is this axis right here, okay? So at zero degrees, this is degrees, let's look at the yellow graph, sine is zero, okay? So at 90 degrees, as this sine graph is going up, this is 90 degrees, sine is positive one, okay? Then the graph is gonna go back down and then halfway through, matter of fact, just one cycle, okay, one, uh, uh, period here is 360 degrees, okay, or 2 pi radians. That's a different story, uh, and you got to be able to understand this basic sine graph and radians, but let's just look at it uh, as degrees because that's what we're dealing with. Uh, so uh, let's continue on. So the sine graph at 180 degrees goes back down to zero. Now it's going down, and at 270 degrees, it's at negative 1, okay? So there's negative 1. That's the value at 270 degrees. So if you want to go in your calculator and type in, you know, sine of 270 degrees, you'll see it's going to pop out negative 1. Or the sine of 180 degrees, you'll get 0. Or the sine of 360 degrees, you're going to get 0 again. Okay, so you need to be able to interpret uh, these graphs. So graphs in uh, mathematics are so important. Now let's go ahead and just try to estimate where the sine of 60 degrees is gonna be. So if this is 90 degrees, and this here is zero degrees, well, 60 degrees will be maybe something like right here, okay? So this is 90 degrees right here. So 60 degrees would be like, say, right there. So what would be the, um, the value of it? Well, it's gonna be less than one, because 60 degrees is less than 90. And actually, if you go into your calculator, like I said, uh, it's going to be a decimal around 0.866, okay? So if we go into our calculator and we go, let me get rid of this stuff here, and we go sine uh, 60 degrees, you'll get a decimal of like 0.866, and there's some other stuff, but this is good enough for what we're doing here, okay? But you can kind of see this graphically, what's going on. Now, um, you need to be able to have a very good feel for the graphs of trigonometric functions, okay, as you study trigonometry. But um, anyways, there's another way we could approach this. You need to know this graph, but this is not the way we would uh, actually find the exact value of the sine of 60 degrees, because I'm going to show you this right now. Okay, so this is what you want to do, right? You want to create a nice little reference triangle. All right, so when you um, when an angle is what we call in standard position, it starts right here on the x-axis and it goes counterclockwise. Okay, so it goes this way uh, to its terminal axis this way. So this is kind of its starting position. This is its ending position. So when we create an angle, you always start this way, a positive angle. All right. So if I said uh, plot 120 degrees that would go past 90 degrees, this is 90 degrees, and you would continue on to 120 degrees, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. Again, I'm kind of covering this pretty quickly here, but uh, 60 degrees would be like right here, okay? So it starts here and then ends there, so we would draw a nice little hypotenuse uh, starting or emanating from the origin, okay? Now hopefully, uh, for the most part, uh, those of you out there watching this video going, okay, I understand that. Now, what you have, okay, let me kind of uh, put that in right there. So here is our nice 60 degree angle, and we want to find the sine of this uh, 60 degrees. So how do we do that? Well, we first of all, we need to know the definition of sine. Okay, now if you remember from your basic trigonometry, uh, you have this thing called so ka Toa. Okay, now if you are not familiar with this little phrase, um, you can check out more of my videos in my geometry uh, playlist on basic trigonometry. Okay, basic right angle trigonometry. 
but uh, you need to be familiar with this. Now, if you're not familiar with what's, what is sine, what is cosine, then maybe this video is not uh, uh, the right one for you right now. But just let's play along here and continue on because the sine, this so part, we're talking about the sine, the, this, the co part is talking about the cosine, and then this is talking about the tangent. So the sine, this O and H, the sine of an angle is uh, equal to the hypotenuse over, um, I'm sorry, the opposite over the hypotenuse, okay? Now here is our angle right here, all right? The hypotenuse is always gonna be the longest part of this right triangle, so there's our H. So what's the opposite angle here, okay? The, the opposite angle is this angle right there, and this is the adjacent angle. So we have an A, an O, and an H, and you can kind of figure out the rest of these uh, ratios for these trigonometric functions um, when you kind of put in, hey, okay, where's the hypotenuse, where's the opposite, and where's the adjacent? You gotta be careful because the opposite and adjacent, you, you gotta really think about where the angle's located, because if the angle's located here, this would be the opposite, okay? But anyways, hopefully this makes sense. So the sign, um, is uh, equal to the so, which is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So in this case right here, the sine of 60 degrees is gonna be equal to this O over H, this over, I'm sorry, this, this right here, this length over this length, okay? So now we need to figure out, well, what are those lengths? Because we can't answer this question uh, unless we know those lengths. Well, luckily, we do know those lengths, and this is going to be incumbent upon you really understanding special right triangles. There's two you need to be very, very familiar with. Those are the 30, 60, 90 special right triangle and the 45, 45, of course, 90 special right triangle. You have to know these super good. Of course, I have videos on this in my geometry playlist as well. But in a 60, 90, and this up here is 30 degrees right there. All right, let's put that little 30 there. Uh, you can always build um, um, a basic um, uh, lengths for the, any uh, 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So the shortest uh, leg of that triangle is one, okay? The hypotenuse is always double the shortest. So let's have this as a positive one because we're in the first quadrant here. So if we double this side, this will be two, okay? In the 30, 60, 90, if this side, for example, was three, then this would be six, okay? So here, I'll just do, I'll use the basic numbers here first. So this is one, two, and now this is going to be the square root of three. It's actually one times the square root of three of this length, okay? Let's do another, I'm gonna put these um, values here, but let's just do something real quick. If, what if this was three? Okay, the hypotenuse would be double that, so that would be six, and then this side, this medium side of the 30, 60, 90, would be this side, the shortest side, times the square root of three. It's always times the square root of three, and this is always the shortest side right there, okay? All right, so you got to understand 30, 60, uh, 90, 45, 45 special right triangles. That's critical to your success with that, but let's go ahead and put some basic numbers in. One, to square root of three. Now, when you're doing this, if uh, these angles were in this quadrant, the second or third or fourth quadrant, you gotta be very mindful that, you know, this, these are gonna become negative over here. Uh, you gotta understand the values, the positive and negative values of these legs of these triangles. Here, this is positive one on the x-axis and this is positive on the y-axis, okay? And, of and the hypotenuse will always be positive. Okay. All right. So now we got ourselves some um, actual measurements of this 30, 60, 90 right triangle. So now we can actually go ahead and plug them in for the opposite over the hypotenuse. So sine of 60 degrees, our opposite is the square root of three and the hypotenuse is two and you are done. That is the answer. That's the exact answer. Now, if you want to just kind of you know, prove that to you, go ahead and take the square root of three and divide it by two, I guarantee you, you're gonna get that decimal 0.866 or whatever the case is here. I believe that's what it was. Yes, yeah, 0.866 that we kind of already, you know, had as an estimate on that sine graph, okay? But this is the exact answer that you wanna know. So this is, about, again, 
a pretty um, basic illustration of a skill that you need to have in trigonometry, which is to be able to evaluate uh, trigonometric functions for these very, very common angles. You have to know how to do this, and it gets more sophisticated uh, when you're dealing with uh, radians and uh, angles in this quadrant and this quadrant and this quadrant. Uh, you got to get really, really good at this, okay? And hopefully now you're like, okay, I understand this. If you understand this, then you're going to be well on your way of understanding all the other problems as well. But it's always nice to tie in um, your work with these graphs or trigonometric functions. You know, try to make these connections the best you can. And uh, if you think about it, you know, this graph and all this information that I covered with you here today, how could you possibly, you know, do your work if you weren't, you know, taking notes? You can't be like, oh, I, how, I you know, I remember that from class. What was that again? No, you got to write, you got to write stuff down. Okay, even though a lot of this stuff is in your textbook, um, you have to write it down because that's the way it's going to get kind of soak into your brain. That's the whole purpose of it. It's not just a reference of like, yeah, yeah, I don't have to do that because I could just look at you know my textbook. No, the idea of note taking is to keep you focused, all right, and listen to your teacher. Your teacher is the kind of like the translator. They're explaining to you what's going on. Okay, so you got to stay real engaged with your note taking and reference that as you're doing these problems. All right, so if this video was helpful in some way, if you even liked it, then please consider smashing that like button. That would definitely uh, help me out. And if you're uh, new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. been on YouTube for over 10 years. I have over 1,000 videos, um, basic to advanced math on my channel. They're all there for you because my passion is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay, so if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my videos and I'm posting new content all the time. But uh, my best math help will be found within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.